What's going on everybody? This is Dean with Blue Ridge Overland Gear and we're gonna be starting a new series on trail etiquette. This has been a popularly requested topic because as the overland adventure lifestyle continues to grow and gain momentum, there's just more and more people out there. And let's face it, the spaces that we're going and traveling to there aren't really that many. So we just gotta kind of look out for each other and trail etiquette is definitely one of those topics that's just gonna make everybody's experience better. It's gonna make your experience better. It's gonna make the other people you run into, it's gonna make their experience better. And also you're gonna leave things a little bit better for the next people that are gonna come and experience that location. Now in this first segment, we're gonna be looking at kind of the mindset to be in before you even leave. These are gonna be a couple different principles that are kind of important to just kind of put you in that frame of reference of going out and traveling. And then in the next video, uh, we're gonna be looking at some situational awareness stuff and kind of some of the etiquette you actually have on the trail. In the third video, we're gonna be looking at some convoy etiquette and traveling with a group of people. And then in the fourth video, we're gonna be looking specifically at some etiquette pertaining to campsites. So stick around for all four sections or you can kind of pick the one that you wanna watch. Um, but in this one, we are gonna be looking at kind of the mindset to be in before you even leave. So the first principle that we're gonna talk about, which is kind of getting you in the right mindset, is the idea of Tread Lightly. Now, Tread Lightly is an organization that exists to kind of promote responsible land use and water use in the outdoors. And they have what's known as the Tread Principle. So the first one is travel responsibly. And what this means is basically staying on designated trails, camping in designated areas, and just being responsible as you travel both on the trail and when you're out hiking or even on waterways. And we're gonna kind of expound upon this a little bit more in later videos, but just wanna make sure you're aware that it is the first of the tread lightly principles. Which brings me to the next one, which is respect rights. You know, other people are out there, they're traveling, they might be mountain biking, they might be canoeing, they might be camping. Um, they may just be traveling by vehicle. Um, like we like to do as overland travel enthusiasts. And so you wanna make sure you're respecting the rights and privileges that other people are enjoying. The next one is educate yourself. And thankfully it's something you're doing right now by watching this video and some of the other videos here on the Blue Ridge Overland Gear channel, as well as other videos out there. So educating yourself can be anything from uh, wilderness first aid to navigation, communication, recovery, any of those skills that are just gonna make you a better person are also gonna mean you're gonna be able to enjoy the outdoors in a little bit more of a responsible manner. The next one is avoid sensitive areas. Now, that may not seem like a hard thing to do, but a lot of people don't realize that there are things like cryptobiotic soil out west. When you step on cryptobiotic soil, uh, it's very, very old, it's very, very fragile, and if you're not careful, you can actually destroy about 100 years of life in one footprint of cryptobiotic soil. The other thing is burn scars. Burn scars are very, very delicate. Things like tire tracks, footprints, campsites, and those sorts of things in areas that have been recently burned can promote things like erosion. And when you don't have living tree roots and those sorts of things holding that soil together, anything that causes erosion is definitely gonna make things worse rather than better. And the last one is do your part. This is something all of us need to embrace so that we're actually out there making sure we're preserving these areas, we're enjoying them responsibly, and we're holding each other accountable. Doing your part is also reporting abuses and neglect that you see. If somebody's doing donuts in the middle of a field where they shouldn't be doing that, you need to report it. I know there's, you know, people don't like being that person, um, but if we're all gonna enjoy this responsibly and make sure that these things are around for other people to enjoy, we need to make sure we're holding each other accountable and take care and also make sure we're holding ourselves accountable. One of the other more popular principles out there is leave no trace. Now this is super popular for backpackers and hikers, those sorts of people, but I think it's equally important for us as vehicle-based overland enthusiasts because, well, we do have a tendency to have a little bit more of a bigger impact with our vehicles and our campsites, and it's something to be mindful of when we're out and about. The first part with leave no trace is plan ahead. And again, this is something we'll talk about a little bit more in greater detail in the future, but you wanna make sure you have a little bit of a plan. How are you gonna handle food waste? How are you gonna handle your campsite? Where are you camping? Where are you traveling? You wanna make sure you're aware of where you're going, what the rules are, do you need permits? What kind of impact are you gonna have? 
Uh, those sorts of things are all very important. The next thing is to travel and camp on durable services. Like before with Tread Lightly, things like cryptobiotic soil and burn scars are areas where you wanna make sure you're not leaving a high impact, you're not quote unquote leaving a trace uh, with where you're going because again, those tire ruts, those footprints uh, do become points of erosion. The next one is dispose of waste properly. Again, going back to the beginning, have a plan. What are you doing with your trash? What are you doing with your food waste? What are you doing with your personal waste? There are some areas where you can dig a hole and do your business in the hole, but there are other places where you're not allowed to do that and you need to pack out your waste. That includes both human waste and animal waste. So if you're traveling with a dog, well, how are you handling your dog food and your dog waste or other pets that you might be traveling with? So the next part of Leave No Trace is leave what you find. And there's a couple different pieces to this. And the first one is gonna be uh, things like souvenirs. When you're traveling through historic areas, um, old mine shafts or ghost towns, those sorts of things, you wanna not take souvenirs so that the next person can enjoy that area. It also has to do with natural things, things like picking wildflowers or rocks or those sorts of things. You don't wanna make sure you're not taking those things so someone else can't enjoy them, but also you wanna make sure you're mitigating the spread of invasive species. If you take a plant from somewhere out of state or out of town and you bring it home with you, you've now brought in an invasive species. So you wanna make sure you're mitigating those sorts of things and that also goes for things like firewood because there are organisms that will inhabit those logs and trees and if you take them from one area to another you could transport an invasive species or something like that things like the emerald ash borer spread through the transportation of firewood so you want to make sure you're leaving those things where you found them which brings me to the next point in leave no trace which is minimize campfire impact and again this has a couple different things the first one is going to be respecting the fire rights and privileges in your area if you go out west wildfire fires are super common and they don't allow wood fires or charcoal fires because they can spread embers. Some areas allow you to have a small propane uh, camp stove or a propane fire pit because that's not putting off any ash or embers. Other places you're allowed to have campfires but it might be restricted to a particular time or season or it may just be on a day-to-day -day basis depending on how much rainfall there is. So you wanna make sure you're checking on those things. The other thing is you wanna make sure you're using an established fire ring. You know, if their campsite already has a fire ring, there's no point making a new one just because maybe you don't like where it is. But some areas allow you to have temporary fire rings. And if you're gonna go through that, you wanna make sure one, you're allowed to do that in that area, but also you make sure if you dig a hole, you fill it back in when you're done, you spread the ashes out, and also you're not putting anything like food waste or trash in that fire pit. The next part of Leave No Trace is respecting the wildlife. Again, we're overland vehicle enthusiasts. We're tromping through the woods in big vehicles making a lot of noise. So you wanna be respectful of the wildlife in your area. And one of the things that a lot of people realize can have a negative impact on the wildlife in your area is something as simple and as benign as playing music. That's a very unnatural sound. And if you're rocking out in your campsite and you've got that stereo cranked, you're actually gonna give a lot of animals around you anxiety. Uh, and that's usually not a good idea. It's also can sometimes be disruptive to other campers, although they're not necessarily wildlife. It is one of those things that you wanna respect, but also you wanna make sure you're not feeding the wildlife, you're not teasing the wildlife, you're not getting too close to them. Um, I just uh, read a story recently about a kid that got too close to a buffalo and got yeeted about nine yards up into the air and flung about 20 feet away from the uh, buffalo. Uh, just one of those things, respect the wildlife because it's not always gonna respect you. And the last one, which I kind of already hinted at is be considerate of others. We're all out to enjoy nature and we might have different ways that we enjoy it. We are vehicle-based overland enthusiasts. There are other people that might be traveling by horseback or hiking or mountain biking, canoeing. Maybe they wanna go out and do photography. Maybe they wanna go out and write or paint or something like that. There's a variety of different ways that we can enjoy the outdoors and you always wanna be respectful and consider of that. And that also goes for camping. If you're camping in something like a campground, Again, don't be that group that is blaring a lot of loud music or something like that. Um, don't be the group that's causing a lot of noise or building a huge bonfire and 
or being messy with your food or those sorts of things. You wanna make sure you're being considerate of others. And again, mitigating and leaving no trace so that the next group that comes to that site isn't gonna be like, wow, there was a crazy party here. No, you wanna make sure you're kind of leaving it a little bit better than you found it. The last group of principles that I'm gonna talk about is the backcountry discovery routes ride respectfully program. Now we are a BDR map dealer and I myself personally have done a number of the backcountry discovery routes in Colorado, Utah, Arizona, a little bit of New Mexico. And of course there's the Mid-Atlantic BDR uh, not far from our shop here in Virginia. I've also done sections of the Pennsylvania part of it and it's a really great series of routes. And I really like their Ride Respectfully program just because it really takes a lot of what we talked about with Tread Lightly and Leave No Trace and kind of compromises it all into one nice neat little ball. And the first one in their list is gonna be Slow Down. And I really like this one myself because if you're out on an overland adventure, enjoy it, take your time. There's no need to rush. Also, when you're traveling on some of these routes, there are blind turns, there are hills, uh, there are some you know, other people out on the trail that you might run into, hopefully not literally. Uh, so you wanna make sure you're slowing down and you're taking your time. The next one is minimize engine noise. Now we can talk about the legalities of exhaust and emissions to a blue in the face, but that's another topic for another video. But basically, again, going back to what we were talking about of respecting the wildlife, um, again, loud exhausts do cause trauma to animals in the area. And also too, it can be annoying to other people that are trying to enjoy the uh, outdoors and those sorts of things. So we wanna make sure you're minimizing that engine noise. The next one is another one of my favorites, and that is wave to people. I'm a Jeep guy. We have this thing called the Jeep wave, and we're always waving at each other, but that extends beyond that. I wave at any other enthusiast vehicle that I see. I wave at dual sport motorcycle people. I wave at people when I see them out mowing their grass just because I wanna be friendly. If I'm driving through somebody's backyard and I'm enjoying their backyard and I'm rec you know, recreating in their area, you know, I wave, I smile, I nod. Plus when you're nice to people, sometimes those people are gonna give you some information that you may not be aware of. Places to eat, places to camp, cool little hidden gems, great trails, waterfalls, those sorts of things. So if you smile and wave, more often than not, it's better off than just kind of being that grumpy person behind the wheel blowing down uh, some back road. The next one is gonna be don't argue with landowners. Again, we can talk about land use and access and all that stuff to we're blue in the face, but that'd be another topic for another video. But ultimately what it's gonna come down to is be nice. Just like Patrick Swayze said in Roadhouse, be nice because that's gonna get you a lot further than just trying to argue with somebody. And I've been that, I've been that person that's come across somebody who says, hey, you can't travel on this road, I own this road. And don't argue because you're just, you're never gonna win. Along the lines of not arguing with property owners is also being respectful of those property owners and not stopping in their yard or in their driveway or in front of their house or regrouping if you're traveling with a group. Because again, with some of these routes like the backcountry discovery routes and some of the other more popular trails out there, you are not the only person that's gonna be traveling this route. And if you stop in that, that person's yard, it might be more than likely that someone else is gonna do the same thing. So you wanna make sure you're kind of regrouping away from people's homes, it goes back to the whole idea of en mitigating engine noise and those sorts of things. And you're just not adding increased traffic to somebody's front yard. And just like before, you know, the BDR series does embrace the principles of leave no trace. We've already talked about that, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but it's kind of one of those things, again, to be mindful of. The next one is stay on track. And just like with Tread Lightly and their travel responsibly piece, again, staying on track is staying on the trail, not taking bypasses that are unnecessary, and making sure you're staying on designated trails and routes. The next one is yield to a wildlife. Now, in the next video segment on situational awareness, we're gonna go into a little bit more detail on yielding and who yields to who and when. Um, but in this case, you know, when you yield to wildlife, um, you wanna be respectful of those animals because when you come up on a bear or a deer or something like a moose, um, you wanna let them have the right of way because you're in their home, you're in their territory. Um, and you don't wanna necessarily just come running up on them super fast. Um, even out west when you're on BLM land and you come across animals that are grazing and those sorts of things, again, take your time, drive slow, be nice and let them go about their life and you know enjoy the scenery. 
The next one is be discreet when nature calls. Again, tread lightly, leave no trace. Some areas you can dig a cat hole, some areas you gotta pack it out. Um, kind of already touched on that, but that is again part of this Ride Respectfully program. The next one again has to do with being out west and that is leave gates as you found them. There is a lot of public land out west and that public land has a variety of different uses. It can be grazing land, it can be mining land, it can be timber land, and there are a lot of gates to kind of section off some of those areas. But the rule is you leave the gate how you found it. If you pull up on a closed gate, you can go through it. You open the gate, you go through, you shut the gate behind you. If the gate is open, leave the gate as you found it because a lot of times those ranchers are letting their cattle move from one area to another or they're trying to keep them restricted to one area. Now on the East Coast, gates get a little bit more fuzzy because there are some private gates on private roads and if it's locked, then you definitely wanna leave it locked. You don't wanna carry a church key, AKA bolt cutters, um, and just kind of cut the bolt and go into some place you're not supposed to be. Uh, and we'll touch on that here in a little bit in the next section, um, but just again, leave gates as you found them. If the gate's closed and locked, leave it closed, leave it locked. If it's closed but unlocked, and you're pretty sure you're allowed to go down that road, then go through, shut the gate behind you. The next one is don't tear up the terrain or blaze new trails. Again, I can't stress it enough. Tread lightly and stay on designated routes. Um, a lot of the places you go out west, you're allowed to be out there, but you're supposed to stay on the designated fire roads or trails that are marked. Same thing here on the east coast. Make sure you're staying on those designated routes. And the last one, and this really is kind of the capstone to all three of these ideals and that is represent the community and the lifestyle in the best light. Whether you're on a motorcycle or in a vehicle or hiking or mountain biking, you are a representative of this lifestyle to everybody that you come across. And if you're that guy that's out there causing a ruckus, engaging in kind of shenanigans and those sorts of things, it makes the whole community look bad. And that's when public lands get closed, that's when trails get shut down, that's when campsites get taken off the list and we're not allowed to go there anymore. So again, all three of these principles are interconnected, they relate, they overlap, but ultimately they can all be summed up in this last one, and that is represent the community in the best light. Now, in the next video, we're gonna talk a little bit about situational awareness, and we're gonna be covering some trail etiquette things such as yielding and some other principles like that.